In this video, I want to introduce an app that I've created that's available on the internet. You can find the URL for this app in the description below the video. And this app is supposed to make understanding probability distributions much easier which will be useful for people who are encountering these distributions for the first time, but also for people who are using these distributions in their research. So the app, essentially what it allows you to do is it allows you to interact dynamically with various distributions. At the moment, we've got 24 distributions. So we've got some continuous univariate distributions. So we've got distributions like the normal, uh, the beta distribution, the Cauchy, and various others. We've also got uh, discrete distributions, so we've got the Bernoulli uh, beta binomial, for example, and also a range of multivariate distributions, including the Dirichlet uh, and some more exotic distributions like the LKJ distribution, which is used increasingly in statistical inference. And with this app, what you can do is you can change the parameter values of each of these distributions and see how that is reflected in the properties of the distribution. So here, we're starting off with a normal distribution. You can see that as I move the mean, I increase the mean to 7.6 away from zero, the distribution, the probability density function, shifts to the right. And similarly, if I shift it to the left, it will then move over here. In fact, it's going, gone off the screen here. But I can increase the range here to allow me to see that. So I can change the mean. I can also change the standard deviation of the normal distribution. And the orange line here shows the mean of this distribution, which for this distribution, one of the parameters is its mean, so it's not really showing much, but for other distributions, it's more informative. And we also have a measure of the standard deviation of this distribution. I also have for those distributions where it's appropriate, mostly univariate distributions, a plot of the cumulative distribution function. So here we can see what this function looks like. Obviously, it's varying between 0 and 1. And again, I'm showing the mean as an orange line here. Along with interacting dynamically with the PDF and the CDF, you can also see formulae for each of the distributions. And so these have been vetted. Uh, I, I've checked that these are all correct. And so we have sort of parameters for the distribution and the bounds for those parameters, the support for the distribution, the moments, the probability density function or probability mass function for discrete random variables and the cumulative distribution function. So we have those formulae here. We also have available to download LaTeX code to reproduce each of these characteristics here. So if you use LaTeX to write your reports, you can just copy and paste this code and that recreates the formulae which you see in this tab. So as I said, we have a range of different distributions. We also have discrete univariate distributions. For example, we have the negative binomial distribution. And the parameterization I use here is one where you indicate the mean of the distribution and the inverse dispersion. So if I increase the mean here, the distribution will shift over to the right. And as I increase inverse dispersion here, the distribution should become more concentrated. In theory, as the inverse dispersion parameter goes to infinity, you should recapitulate the distribution for a Poisson random variable. And similarly, as before, we have the CDF for now this discrete distribution. We have formulae here, which indicate various characteristics of that distribution. And we also have LaTeX code that you can copy and paste. I also have multivariate distributions here. So for some distributions, it makes more sense to draw samples from that distribution and plot the histogram of those samples. So for the Dirichlet distribution, what I'm doing here is I'm sampling from this distribution and I'm then showing what the samples for the first parameter, in this case, a probability, are from doing this sampling process. So you can see here, this is quite noisy because I've only got a small sample size. If I increase the sample size, we start to see a more coherent distribution. And as I change the parameters of that distribution, the sampling distribution shifts over. So I've got this for two dimensions for the Dirichlet. I've also got it for three dimensions. So for three dimensions, we can imagine the samples as lying somewhere within the probability simplex. 
And so as I change the parameters here, you should see that the samples that we're getting actually shift over. And in fact, I'm going to use fewer samples because it makes it a bit easier to see. And as I increase alpha towards one particular value, we see that the samples tend to be located near the vertex corresponding to that particular variable here. I also have a visualization of samples from the four-dimensional Dirichlet distribution using a tetrahedral representation. And so as before, we can see that as I change the parameters to correspond to any one particular variable, that we can see that we get a concentration of the samples near to that particular vertex corresponding to that variable. As well as for the Dirichlet, I also have visualizations for some other distributions. So I've also got the LKJ distribution, which is a distribution over correlation matrices. And this distribution is increasingly used in statistical inference due to some of its properties actually being slightly more favorable than those of the Wishart and the inverse Wishart distributions. And as for the Dirichlet distribution, I find it easier to draw samples from this distribution and visualize those samples. So here, what we have is we're drawing uh, 2000 correlation matrices from an LKJ distribution. And I'm plotting here the parameters which correspond to the correlation between dimensions one and two versus the correlation between dimensions two and three. And we can see that as I change the degrees of freedom here, I get a change in the sampling distribution. And I can also change the dimensions of my LKJ distribution. Perhaps the most important thing for using this app in applied work is that it contains a code dictionary. So here, under the code tab, we can see that what we're able to do is to select our language. And we can select between R, Mathematica, MATLAB, Python, and STAN. And we can select a range of properties. At the moment, we've just got three properties, the PDF, the log PDF, and code to generate a random sample of size n. And below here, we have our code to actually do this. And importantly, this code is dynamic, so that as I change the properties on the left-hand side, we can see here that the code is actually changing to reflect those changes. And so we see for R, we have code to calculate the PDF for a given correlation matrix X corresponding to a given degrees of freedom that I select here on the left hand side. I also have the same for the log PDF, which here isn't, isn't very interesting. I just add a log equals true here. And I also have codes to generate a random sample of size N. And again, this function call down here at the bottom corresponds to the parameters that I select here at the top. So as I change the dimensions of the distribution, we should see that this code changes as well. So having the code dynamic isn't just a trick. Actually, it's very useful because different languages have different ways in which they parameterize different distributions. So we see here for the negative binomial distribution for R, we are able to parameterize that distribution exactly as I have parameterized it here in terms of these sliders. So I can specify the mean of the negative binomial and the inverse dispersion parameter. But as I change to a different distribution, let's say I go to Python, there isn't exactly this function available in Python. So what I do here is I include a function that allows you to actually recapitulate the same result as you would see in R. And similarly in MATLAB, MATLAB has a different way of coding up this particular probability distribution. And so this code here, which you notice has different parameters to those which are shown on the left here, actually corresponds to the same density value. And I find this really helpful for doing applied work because I'm constantly having to switch between different statistical languages and they all have their own idiosyncrasies. And this codex here, this sort of dynamic dictionary, actually provides a simple way to move between different statistical languages and be confident that you're getting the same result across each of them. Anyway, I hope you find this app useful. If you notice any errors, then please leave an issue on the GitHub repo. And similarly, if you've got any suggestions, either leave an issue on the GitHub repo or send me an email.